So we know that the nervous system can be divided anatomically into the central nervous system, which is the brain, the brain stem and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which are all the nerves that come out and away from the brain and spinal cord, predominantly motor, and then all the nerves that come back in to the brain and spinal cord, predominantly sensory. So what I want to talk about right now are some of the divisions of the central nervous system. So brain, brain stem, spinal cord, and we're just going to focus predominantly on the brain and the brain stem. So what I want you to do is first I need you to picture a frontal section of the brain viewing it from a frontal perspective. So that means that if I were to take my brain out and I were to cut it right down the middle separating out anterior and posterior sections and then throwing away the anterior half and you're looking into the brain from a frontal view, that's what I'm about to draw up. And then we're going to break it down talking about the different anatomical structures from uh, an embryological uh, perspective. So let's draw it up very quickly. Let's first draw up the cerebrum. And then let's draw this up. So that may not be the prettiest picture you've ever seen, but what I've basically drawn up is what you can picture as being the brain itself, or what we think of as the brain, or the cerebrum more like it. Then we've got the midbrain, then we've got the pons, and the medulla, and the cerebellum, and then the spinal cord. So let's actually label these up with some appropriate terms. When we refer to this aspect of the brain itself, now there's some deeper parts to it as well. Now remember when you look at the brain, you look at the outside of the brain, the gross anatomy, you'll see that there's all these bump ups and these groove downs and the bump ups are called gyri or a gyrus for singular and the bumps down are sulci or a sulcus for singular and that they make up or at least the first one to two millimeters or so make up the cerebral cortex. So I could actually draw the outer, fine outer layer like this and we're going to talk more about the cerebral cortex in future videos. But we've got the fine outer layer, which is known as the cerebral cortex. And then you've got the rest of the cerebellum, more deeper parts, so where there's white matter or axons that project deeper to other areas. And I'm just going to highlight it like this in red. So these parts that I've highlighted in red are actually called, and that includes these deeper structures here, all of that is called the forebrain, also known from an embryologic perspective as the prosencephalon. But the prosencephalon or forebrain can be divided into two more structures the more outer structures and the more deeper structures. So the outermost structures, which is the cerebral cortex and some of the deeper white matter with something called the basal ganglia or basal nuclei, well, that's known as the telencephalon. So let's draw this up. We've got, let's draw it like this. Basically, the outermost aspects are known as the telencephalon. Now remember, the suffix cephalo is referring to brain, okay? Telencephalon, and I said the telencephalon is the cortex, the underlying white matter, white matter has two T's, and the basal ganglia, also known as the basal nuclei. So that's the telencephalon. The diencephalon, which is the next subdivision of the forebrain or prosencephalon, which sits around about here. Like I said, this is called the diencephalon. Well, this is made up of the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the epithalamus, and the subthalamus. So let's just write thalamus. 
hypothalamus and epithalamus. We'll talk more about the functions of these anatomical parts in the future. So telencephalon, diencephalon, subdivisions of the forebrain or the prosencephalon, which you can see up here. If we move to the next part, which is known as the midbrain, this is the most superior aspect of the brain stem, is the midbrain. And it's also termed mesencephalon, mesencephalon. Then we go to the next substructures here, which is actually, so you've got midbrain, then pons and the medulla, so we'll actually write that in. Let's write pons, then let's write medulla, which is also known as the medulla oblongata, so medulla or medulla oblongata, and this structure that sits behind is the cerebellum. Cerebellum simply means little brain, tiny brain. And again, we'll talk about the function of that in future videos. So this entire area right here, we've got the forebrain, we've got the midbrain, now we have the hindbrain. And the hindbrain's name, rhombencephalon. And the hindbrain, or the rhombencephalon, like I said, is made up of the pons, medulla, and cerebellum. What is now below? Well, that's basically the spinal cord itself. And there's numerous videos that I've already put up on the spinal cord. So let's write spinal cord here. So this is a very quick overview, uh, an overview of the anatomy or the anatomical divisions of the nervous system from both an embryological perspective and also just from a divisional based perspective. The forebrain, also known as the prosencephalon, is made up of two divisions, the telencephalon, which is the cortex, the underlying white matter, and the basal ganglia, also known as the basal nuclei. Then we've got some more deeper structures within the cerebrum, which is known or of the forebrain, which is known as the diencephalon, and that's the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the epithalamus, and the subthalamus. Below the forebrain, we've got the midbrain, and that's made up of the midbrain itself, and that's the mesencephalon. It's the first or most superior aspect of the brain stem. The next part of the brain stem is the pons and the medulla, and together with the cerebellum, they're called the hindbrain, also known as the rhombencephalon. Rom Forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, brain, stem, spinal cord. Hope that made sense.